Hello class. Today I'll be teaching you about hangma, which is the Korean term for the way of the moving stones or the way of the moving horse. It is important to learn how to make moves that are not easily cut or destroyed. So I'll introduce you to the six most common shapes that keep your stones strong and safe. In the next lecture, we will look at some examples from my own students' games, and I'll use those examples to create some problems for you. The first move, or uh, hangma, the number one basic, is the extension. The idea is the extension of the extension is that it's slow but strong. Uh, the, when I say strong, that means that it has quite a lot of liberties. Compared to one stone that has four liberties, uh, an extended stone or two stones have six, two, four, six, uh, making it, you know, two liberties stronger than a one stone that has four. When I say slow, I mean that it's not building a lot of um, potential points or framework um, for territory. Uh, in a Go game, in the beginning, if white was to do a three space extension, or if black was to do a two space extension, only making a framework of four points, white doing a three space extension is a much faster move in making more um, territory, or at least a framework. It's not guaranteed, but it's a framework of territory. So they're looking at a framework of 10 points compared to four. Uh, some good examples of using the extension, just very quickly. Uh, I've taught Capture Go already. So if you know how to capture stones, then you understand that when black plays here, white's only one move away from capturing black. Now, if it's Black's turn, obviously extending will uh, add three more liberties to the stone that recently only had one, meaning that it's prolonging Black's life, helping him uh, connect and stay strong. So that's what I mean when I say the extension is strong but slow. The next basic hangma is oh and i'll show you one more example of when it's a good idea to uh, play the extension so when white hanes and takes away black's second or third liberty black only has two liberties so a good move for black is to strengthen himself now Black had two liberties, but now black has four, so he's doubled his liberties. And now let's say if white played somewhere else and black was to cut. Now you can see black has four liberties on this group and two on this one, making C the weak group. But A only has two liberties and B only has two liberties. So A is a weak group, B is a weak group, meaning that white has two weak groups and black only has one which allows um, black to have an advantage in the fight to come. And if you see, let's say if black Atari and black Atari, the correct moves for white are to extend um, so that they can continue to live and fight. Also, when there's a cross cut like this, the idea would be, actually it would be, white doing the Atari, but the idea would be to extend, to strengthen yourself because your groups are weak. So it's a good idea to strengthen both groups. The only thing is, as black kind of has some advantage because he gets to go first in this pinwheel, but it's all, the, it's all uh, semantics, right? We'll show examples with real games in the next lecture. Uh, for now, I just wanted to show you the extension. The next uh, hangma, the second basic one, is the one jump. As you can see, it's only one step away from the extension. So there's only one space between it, making it the one jump. The one jump is faster than the extension and is still relatively strong and safe. If you see if white threatens to disconnect black by playing something like, by playing something here, black is only one move away from connecting. Now black is super strong. It's like a triple extension, if anything, or a double extension. Uh, if white tries to play between these stones to separate black, 
black can Atari white. Now white for a good move for white is to extend. And um, black has two cutting points. So it's a good idea for black to connect on one of these. Still, if white is, you know, uh, eager to cut you to because they want to separate these two groups, uh, black has the advantage uh, and white really doesn't have many options to try and separate black anymore. Black will mainly always stay connected. And that's because the one jump is such a good um, shape. It's a good uh, move. Uh, the thing, those are good examples of how to stay connected with the one jump. But the one disadvantage of the one jump is, is that it's still slow. Faster than the extension, but still slow in comparison in the opening of the game. The idea is that if you know Black was to play a one jump, he would only be making a framework of six points. Whereas if um, White plays the third space extension, the, the framework for them is still ten, so it's a lot more. And in Go, you really just need one point over your opponent to win the game. Or even 0 0.5, but uh, we'll talk about those rules more later. For now, uh, we'll sh I'll show you the next move, uh, Hangma, which is the third one I would call the two jump. As you can see, it is two spaces, and the idea is that when you play the extension, sorry, I'm, I'm messing it up, but the idea is that the extension is one move ahead. The one jump is technically one move away from your black stone, but two moves ahead. And then the two jump is two spaces between your stones, so three moves ahead. Uh, on the third line, one, two, three, close to the edge of the board on the third line, the two space extension is very strong and still connected easily. Uh, in the middle of the board, I can't say that to be true, but on the third line, uh, it's a good move if you want to stay connected. Uh, if white tries to disconnect you by playing something, you know, with the intention of playing something like this. Black can easily extend. White peeps again, and black uh, connects. So now they're obviously strongly connected and making territory. Uh, if white was to try and cut through, black can Atari. And now if white, uh, sorry, if black does anything, you know, protect his cutting points, you know, black will be connected and perfectly fine. Uh, if white was to play here, black can play under the white stone. And if white tries to cut to disconnect these all these stones, black can easily uh, capture white. No matter what tries to do, uh, black uh, white will get captured. By black. So as you can see, the these black groups are still all connected, no matter how hard white tries in this situation, um, because the two jump is a good move. It's uh, the third hangma. Let's see. The only disadvantage, I'd say, is once again at the beginning of the game, um, the two jump is pretty good. It's uh, doing a framework of two, four, six, eight uh, points, whereas white's th third extension is still making 10 points, so it's still making more than black. Um, but that's how you can tell from speed um, and strength. So the two space jump is still strong and still connected and has some good speed. The three space extension, it can be split. Um, I played a lot with it to show how it can be split, uh, but <laughs> it's difficult to show. So I'd rather show you like through actual games. Uh, but for now, we'll move on to the next move. The next move, or the fourth one in the Hangma, is the diagonal. The diagonal is very, very strong. Uh, I would say it's nearly as strong as the extension. Uh, thus far, you can see that 
uh, this one stone has four liberties and this one stone has four liberties so it neither of them have the six that the extension gives you right but with uh, black being uh, diagonally connected if white tries to disconnect black only needs one move and now he's fully connected and comes out with one two three four five six liberties whereas white only has two making uh, black extremely powerful and white very weak um, vice versa if white plays on this point then black can connect this way so the idea is that black has two places to connect and um, it's very hard for white to separate black in this instance uh, also I wanted to point out that black is on the fourth line so one two three four which uh, is one point more than the extension so the idea is that you're building more points um, and more influence throughout the board so playing on the fourth line is usually a good idea but once again uh, just to point out I've said this many times now but I'm sure you're sick of hearing it but the idea is that uh, in the beginning of the game it's not a great move to use on the second move just because it's better to create a larger framework with uh, fast extensions compared to slow um, movement so it's slow but strong that's why I wanted to get it next would be the Knight's move now the Knight's move is named after the chess piece excuse me <coughs> is named after the chess piece movement the knight essentially it moves in an L shape the idea with the knight's move is that you're still pretty uh, well connected and it's moving faster than the diagonal where the diagonal was diagonally connected the black moves one step for further uh, this if you see builds territory more territory so you're actually getting a full extra line of framework territory which will be three points compared to the two uh, it's still slower than the three space extension but it's um, on the right track I would say of building territory for the opening of the game uh, if white tries to disconnect which you can see white is only one move away from black can connect, uh, extend and now you can see these stones are nearly connected there is a cutting point which is here but it actually doesn't uh, threaten black as much as you'd think because um, this extension has four liberties and this stone only has two liberties once you Atari uh, white continuously has three to two liberties each move and then it can be easily brought down to death or one or zero I should say so this is still a strong connection even when white tries to break it uh, same here if white plays this way black extends and you can kinda see a pattern where if white tries to separate you it's good to extend to your other stones so that you can stay connected uh, if white tries to cut this way, you can put black, um, sorry, white in a ladder, which is just death for white. Uh, so this cut isn't good, and that means that white can't separate black. Uh, if white plays this way, there's actually a few variations that can come out of this, uh, but if you just wanted to play to block, you can see black is pretty much fully connected to uh, himself this is almost the diagonal connection if but this is a very easy to kill right so even though it's not actually connected it has a connection um, so you can see that the, the knight's move is connected this way and it's connected this way you could even go further this would probably be another lesson when it comes to Tetsuji but the idea is that uh, this black is disconnecting or this black extension is disconnecting these two white stones 
So if white tries to kill black here, black uh, is able to swindle himself two stones, and you can see black is has a good connection here. If white plays this way to connect, then black has a ladder. And now black stones are all fully connected and white is still in trouble. So um, I think I already said it, but the idea is that white's still making more points with the three space extension, but the knight's move is still a really good move. Uh, the last humma, number six, is the large knight's move. So this would be the knight's move. And then one step further will be the large knight's move. Um, this actually is the first move out of all the moves that I've showed you that actually builds a bigger framework than the three space extension. And the idea is because it's on the fourth line and playing on the fourth line gives you three spaces of um, framework territory compared to being on the third line. One, two, three. Um, that only gives you two spaces of framework territory. So to conclude here, um, this actually gives you 11 points of framework, whereas this only gives you 10. Um, to show the connectivity of these stones, if white tries to disconnect this way, It's the, pretty much the same thing as the knight. Knight's move. Uh, white is in a lot of trouble here. Because this connection, this uh, it's almost like a double extension. It's a, you know, this would be an extension and this would be another extension. So a double extension here has a lot of liberties. So as long as you push white into your strong groups, you can kill white. Um, and white has no options of disconnecting uh, bl black here. Uh, white now has a weak group here, and this group is pretty weak too because it's surrounded. Uh, if we do this way, black can extend the extension on both sides. And now white is in trouble no matter which uh, side white tries to save there's a ladder on both sides. So black will always stay connected by capturing a stone. Um, if white plays on the underside, just like last time with the knight, black can kind of uh, just uh, cover him. So whereas white is making you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points roughly. Black has the potential and the strength on all the outside to considerably make a lot of points on the other side of the board. Um, but ideally, oh, and to finish that statement, you can see that black is pretty much fully connected. Not fully because there's still a cutting point, but you can block that cutting point easy. Um, so black stayed connected and strong while also moving fast. This is definitely the fastest movement out of the six moves. So I'll end the lesson here showing the all six of the basic ones. The extension, the one jump, the two jump, the diagonal, the knight's move, and the large knight's move. All uh, six basic hung uh, I hope this lesson helps. Next lesson, I'll be showing you uh, examples from my students' games to see when this was working, when it wasn't, when it should be. And then I will create some problems to help you uh, practice these moves. I hope to see them in your game properly, and I hope they help you win a lot of games. Uh, thank you for joining me on this lesson. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.